Dream Chaser might die. Once hailed as the future of American spaceflight and a promising alternative to Boeing's troubled Starliner, the Dream Chaser spaceplane now seems to be facing a similar fate. After years of delays, NASA's patience appears to be running out. While Starliner got multiple second chances, it looks like Dream Chaser won't be as fortunate. Reports suggest that NASA is pulling the plug on its contract with Sierra Space altogether. So why is NASA being so tough on Dream Chaser, even though it showed so much promise? Could this really be the end of one of the coolest space planes ever designed? Let's dive into all the details in today's Tech Map episode. It's easy to understand why the space community once adored Sierra Space's Dream Chaser. When it was first introduced, the vehicle seemed like a bridge between the Space Shuttle's legacy and a new era of reusable commercial spacecraft. Dream Chaser was designed as an autonomous reusable space plane that could launch vertically atop a rocket and land horizontally on any standard runway. The appeal was obvious quick access to cargo after landing shorter turnaround times between missions and no need for complex ocean recoveries like those required for capsules. For many, Dream Chaser represented the elegant future of space travel. The origins of Dream Chaser trace back to NASA's HL-20 concept from the 1990s, a lifting body design meant for crew transport to low Earth orbit. In the early 2000s, the idea was revived with the hope of turning NASA's concept into a real operational vehicle. After falling into the hands of Sierra Nevada Corporation, this project was proposed for the commercial crew program and even received some seed money from NASA under the commercial crew development program, phases one and two, as well as the commercial crew integrated capability phase. Each stage brought Dream Chaser closer to flight readiness. But when NASA made its final selection in 2014, Dream Chaser lost out to SpaceX's Crew Dragon and Boeing's Starliner. The decision wasn't just about money, it reflected maturity and risk. Capsules like Dragon and Starliner had simpler proven designs, while Dream Chaser's winged concept, though innovative, still needed extensive development. Still, Sierra Nevada didn't walk away empty-handed. The company was later selected for NASA's Commercial Resupply Services II contract, which guaranteed a minimum of seven cargo flights to the ISS. Unlike the crew version, this cargo variant wouldn't carry astronauts, but it kept the dream alive. At the time, optimism ran high. In 2017, Sierra Space successfully conducted an approach and landing test using an engineering prototype proving that the space plane could glide and land safely on a runway. The test fueled excitement about a future where sleek commercial space planes might routinely ferry supplies between Earth and orbit. However, aerospace history is full of ambitious vehicles slowed by real-world challenges. Dream Chaser's first cargo mission, originally planned for 2021, was delayed year after year moving to 2022, 2023, 2024, and then 2025. The delays hinted at deep technical and logistical problems. When the first flight-ready vehicle, Dream Chaser Tenacity, arrived at Kennedy Space Center in May 2024, hopes rose again for an imminent launch. But then came silence. At press events, NASA gave few details about the schedule, and rumors began circulating about certification issues. By September 2025, NASA confirmed that the agency was removing its obligation for seven guaranteed flights, stating it was no longer obligated for a specific number of resupply missions. The decision was part of a mutual contract amendment, but was widely viewed as a major setback for Sierra Space. As predicted, the problems centered on vehicle certification. NASA potentially could have been concerned that Sierra wouldn't have all the required certifications in time for a flight in the near future, especially since ISS is scheduled to be retired in 2030. In August, the National Space Agency stated that Sierra Space was in the final phase of certification, but was still stuck in two key areas, software and propulsion systems. 
NASA has demanded rigorous end-to-end -end software testing before allowing any new spacecraft to approach the ISS. Its caution was understandable. The troubled first flight of Boeing's Starliner had revealed how software flaws could jeopardize missions. Dream Chaser's propulsion system added another layer of complexity. The vehicle uses a hybrid system combining kerosene and hydrogen peroxide, a cleaner, less toxic propellant compared to hydrazine. While safer, it requires extensive testing and validation from scratch. Additional integrated safety reviews also had to be completed before flight clearance. Complicating matters further was the launch schedule for United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur rocket, the vehicle tasked with carrying Dream Chaser to orbit. The Vulcan itself faced multiple delays, leaving limited windows for Sierra Space to launch. Given these challenges, NASA and Sierra Space agreed on a compromise. Instead of docking with the ISS on its first mission, Dream Chaser's debut would be a free flight demonstration. In this mission, Tenacity will launch into orbit, test its propulsion guidance re-entry and runway landing, but without connecting to the ISS. It will still operate close enough to validate its systems in realistic conditions. This approach reduces risk and gives Sierra Space time to gather valuable data. The test flight is now scheduled for no earlier than late 2026. Now let's start with the first bottleneck, the technical hurdles hindering Dream Chaser from obtaining NASA certification. In fact, NASA doesn't hand out certifications easily. It's a meticulous multi-phase process designed to guarantee design, integrity, safety, and mission reliability. Here's how it typically unfolds. First preliminary design review. Confirms the initial design meets requirements. Second critical design review validates the final design before manufacturing. Third system integration and testing includes component level tests, environmental tests, and integrated system tests. Fourth flight readiness review. Ensures all tests are complete and the spacecraft is ready for launch. Lastly, post-flight evaluation assesses performance after initial missions to refine certification for future flights. According to updates from both NASA and Sierra Space Dream Chaser is currently at the culmination of the system integration and testing phase. However, it's still awaiting full NASA certification for two key systems, software and propulsion. This is very important for launch clearance. At the time of editing, the Dream Chaser team is conducting component-level software tests. These are foundational checks that isolate and validate each subsystem, making sure every piece performs reliably and matches design specifications before everything is integrated into the full spacecraft. Once component testing wraps up, the program will move on to integrated system testing which evaluates how all the hardware and software work together as a single cohesive spacecraft. One of the next big milestones for software certification is called Day in the Life Testing scheduled after December. This simulates a complete mission scenario from pre-launch to landing to make sure the integrated systems, hardware and software can handle real operational conditions. To bridge the gap between component testing and full integration, Sierra Space performed tow tests in mid-November. This test involves the fully assembled spacecraft being towed along a runway, primarily to verify its navigation software under realistic conditions. At the same time, they completed an environmental test called EMI-EMC. This ensures all electrical systems work harmoniously without interfering with one another, a critical step that supports overall software reliability and certification. In short, software certification is now advancing through component level and environmental testing, but will need to be completed with system integration testing and finally NASA approval. Full certification will likely be completed after December 2025, possibly as early as 2026. Now, when it comes to propulsion, 
Sierra Space has already put Dream Chasers engines through some serious trials. At their Peiwei facility, the team has completed hundreds of rocket engine firings, all part of the classic component level testing phase. These tests focus on individual propulsion components to confirm their reliability performance and safety before they're integrated into the full spacecraft. But the real challenge lies in what comes next, the major integration tests. There are two big ones still ahead, the acoustic test and the hot fire test. The final round of acoustic testing is currently scheduled for December 2025. This test doesn't directly measure engine performance, but it's crucial. It evaluates how the propulsion system and surrounding components handle intense vibration and sound pressure similar to what they'll experience during an actual rocket launch. Passing this stage ensures the system can endure the extreme noise and structural stress of liftoff. This test is an important prerequisite to upcoming hot fire tests planned for after December 2025 in Colorado. This is the moment of truth, a full-scale firing of the integrated propulsion system to verify performance stability and safety under flight-like conditions. Successful completion of this test is essential before NASA can give the final launch clearance. So where does that leave us right now? As of November 2025, some of the major integration and environmental tests like EMI, EIN, EMC, and the upcoming acoustic test have either been completed or are actively underway. The next major milestones on the horizon are the Day in the Life test, which will integrate both software and hardware in a full mission simulation, and the hot fire test for the propulsion system. Both are critical for final certification towards the first launch in the fourth quarter of 2026. Although Dream Chaser's progress so far is pretty impressive, there's still one major roadblock standing in the way propulsion certification. Now, to be fair, both software and propulsion are still moving through NASA's certification process. But if we're being honest, propulsion is the bigger bottleneck here. The engines simply haven't gone through as many of the major validation steps as the software has. For example, Dream Chaser's software systems have already completed key tests like EMI, EIN EMC, and tow testing, both critical milestones that prove reliability and integration readiness. The propulsion system, on the other hand, is still earlier in its certification journey. So far, Sierra Space has conducted smaller scale tests such as rocket motor firings at its Poway facility, but not yet the final major environmental test, acoustic test, not to mention the full scale hot fire test, which is the true benchmark for engine readiness. And this isn't the first time propulsion challenges have slowed things down. Dream Chaser's launch timeline has already slipped several times from early targets like 2021 and 2023, largely due to ongoing engine-related hurdles. These have included design refinements, integration challenges, and the kind of technical troubleshooting that's common in complex spacecraft development. Dream Chaser's propulsion system uses a hybrid propulsion design that combines hydrogen peroxide as a monopropellant with kerosene as a secondary propellant. This setup is a major departure from traditional spacecraft engines that rely on hydrazine, a highly toxic chemical. By contrast, hydrogen peroxide and kerosene are cleaner, safer, and easier to handle, giving Dream Chaser key environmental and operational advantages. But innovation always comes with extra scrutiny. Because this hybrid propulsion system is relatively novel, Sierra Space must go through a far more extensive testing and validation campaign, essentially building the system's certification record from the ground up. That means not just static fire tests, but also throttle and restart capability, evaluations, integration tests with the spacecraft's other subsystems and demonstrations of reliable performance across every phase of the mission, from launch to orbital maneuvering to re-entry and landing. 
And since this system is unique to Dream Chaser, NASA's certification process must verify in great detail that it meets all safety reliability and operational standards required for missions to and from the International Space Station. The result, a longer and more complex certification timeline than what's seen with more conventional propulsion systems. It's the price of innovation, but also what makes Dream Chaser stand out as one of the most forward-looking spacecraft in development today. Now beyond the technical challenges, there's another big factor that could slow down Dream Chaser's path to orbit. And it comes from the outside its launch provider, ULA. ULA has been facing increasing pressure in today's competitive launch market, which is now dominated by reusable lower cost and higher performance rockets. To stay relevant, ULA has been developing its next generation launch vehicle, the Vulcan Centaur, a modern rocket designed to offer competitive pricing and flexibility for both commercial and government customers. But here's the catch. This transition from traditional rocket tech to modern systems has been slower than expected. The result? A growing launch backlog. Meanwhile, competitors like SpaceX have been rapidly expanding their lead with frequent reusable Falcon 9 launches tightening ULA's share of the market. And this has had real consequences for smaller customers like Sierra Space. Back in June 2024, Dream Chaser was originally scheduled to fly on Vulcan Centaur's second mission. But due to scheduling issues and ULA's need to prioritize certification flights for U.S. military contracts, Sierra Space's payload was bumped from the manifest. In its place, an inert test payload was flown instead. The reasoning was simple. ULA urgently needed to complete Vulcan's certification for defense missions. With Vulcan's schedule filling up fast in the coming years, it's hard not to wonder if history might repeat itself. And that's where an interesting possibility enters the picture. SpaceX with Falcon Heavy Extended Fairing Option. Dream Chaser measures about 9 meters 30 feet long and 4. 5 meters 15 feet wide thanks to its winged lifting body design. Falcon Heavy's extended payload. Fairing offers around 18.6 meters 61 feet in height and an internal diameter of 5.2 meters 17 feet. This upgrade was designed to accommodate larger and more complex payloads, including missions to the Lunar Gateway and Department of Defense satellites that simply wouldn't fit in a regular fairing. Interestingly, the U.S. Department of Defense helped fund the fairing's development under the NSSL Phase II contracts, which shows just how strategically important it is. The only trade-off. This extended fairing isn't built for reusability. It's too large and heavy to recover efficiently. But for unique payloads like Dream Chaser, that's a small price to pay.